tomorrow morning, you get tapped out, second due, you arrive, engine one's on the line, you see this, you're assigned search. Are you gonna grab that second side? When you, do you, when your second side, do you see the basement, the window below? And more importantly, do you see that window above? When you see that, do you automatically think of this? Possibly a bedroom? But when you think about that bedroom, do you think about access? Do you think about where the stairs, the location of the stairs, the layout of the structure, or do we go to VES, go ladders, go outside in? When you come across these, right, are you thinking automatically egress, windows, where our victim, how we're gonna take our victim out? Are you oriented and cognitive enough when you're searching, when you're feeling something, not tapping, but actually feeling stuff, that when you come across these, this set of chairs, you're actually looking for these, a three and a five-year-old? How disoriented are you? So that's what we're gonna talk about today, or about orientation. <clears throat> Search. Uh, about 2003, I was working for a smaller fire department. I was uh, three, on a three-person truck. We were called out to a second do fire. I was pretty young in my career. I, uh, I only went through a, a college, a little bit of volunteer time, and I only knew what the small variety of people knew around me, right? Um, we arrived, second due, one story, single family dwelling, garage is on the right, and my officer looks behind me, or looks behind him and says, hey, we're going to search. So what does that mean? What it means to me was, I gotta be full PBE, and I'm gonna have a, uh, I have a scabbard on, right? Back then, we, had, we all had pick-headed axes and scabbard. That's what I was trained to do. We went to the front door, you open up the front door, and we had smoke, we had smoke down to the ground. My lieutenant came up, we had, I dropped the rope, we didn't use the rope, we dropped the rope, some other tools right on the ground, because we always bring tools to the front door, that's what I was taught. And what does he say? So smoke to the ground, open the door, what does he look at me and say? Okay, what kind? He says, left-hand wall search, right? Garage on the left, right? Left-hand wall search. All right, so what do I automatically start thinking? I automatically start thinking, okay, what's that mean to me? All right, I'm gonna get on all fours, right? I'm gonna get down, he's gonna be right in front of me, I'm gonna search the same three feet that he does, I'm gonna have my left hand on the wall because it's a left-hand wall search. I was taught, I keep my left hand on the wall for orientation. I was taught because you don't wanna miss a door, you don't wanna miss a window. What's my right hand doing? My left hand's on the wall, my head's on his butt, what is my right hand? Searching for what? His boot. This is how I was taught. I was taught, hey, we gotta make, 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 uh, maintain orientation. Make sure we don't lose each other. Left hand on the wall, search, search, search. I don't know about your house, but my house, I can't stay on a wall unless it's in a hallway. We're off, right? We're going around furniture all the time. So that's what we do. We get, I get down on all fours, he goes in, we go left. 10 to 15 feet in, what are the things I've already done? Am I, have I started searching yet? Do you really think I did? Because looking back on it now, I never did. All I cared about was keep my hand on the wall, keep my, keep my, uh, my right, hit, or right hand searching, searching for his boot, and don't die. I literally was taught, don't die, right? It's hot, it's smoky. I'm not experienced in that at that time. I didn't know what I was really doing. I was just trying to get a primary complete on the radio. That was my goal, to get out. Probably another 10 feet in, we're working around stuff. You know, like you come up on a, uh, you come up on a couch, or whatever you have, and you can't let go of the wall, right? So you kind of start standing up in the heat, and I'm like, okay, that's still the wall, because I still want to miss a door. Well, how many people put furniture in front of a door? Really, right? What am I really searching for, and how am I really staying oriented? So a few more feet in, going along the wall, Closing my eyes because it's a little bit of comforting, right? It's comforting. I learned this. Something that I don't advocate anymore at all. Because if you open your eyes, you might be able to grab that lift, right? A little bit of lift. Someone takes a window. Somebody does a topside vent. Whatever you have, you don't want to miss that life fire layout that you can get by closing your eyes, right? I do a sweep. I do a sweep, sweep, nothing. What do I do? I freeze for a second. I kind of go, okay, where's he at? And I lurch forward and I miss him. Nothing. I kind of call out, but it's smoky. No one can hear anything. Like Jerry Smith said, hey, you ever try to talk to your wife inside, the, inside of a, um, a shower? They're like, what? What? It's steamy in there, right? The steam actually deadens the sound. 
and so does the curtain. Well, that's what smoke does. When people stand up, you're deadening not only your eyesight, but actually your sound. You're listening for fire, you're listening for victims, you're listening for your partner. I couldn't hear him, but I was already on the ground. So then what I did is I just started spanning out. I got off the wall. That's a no-no. I started searching with both hands and I started moving fast. And I started hitting things and I'm like, okay. And I started not mentally knowing, but I was actually oriented to where I was in the structure. I was still in the first room. I, got, I started going back, I hit linoleum. I went through like a, uh, a threshold and I'm like, ah, for some reason it didn't feel right. I knew I was in the wrong spot. I was probably in the kitchen towards the back of the house. He said he was going left, left-hand wall search, right? So I made my way to the left, found the hall, heard a, heard a little bit of clamoring down the, down the hall, and I'm like, okay, that must be them down there. So I started making my way down, crawl, crawl, crawl. The noise is getting louder. I was calling out, nothing, calling out, nothing. The end of the hall, there's another threshold, and there's a door. It's a bedroom. This is where the, the, uh, the, fi the base of the fire was. It, I think it was just a, uh, actually a, a, um, it's a small what we call a typical RNC, room and contents fire, but created a lot of black smoke. Um, went in, found my, my lieutenant, grabbed his boot, he didn't know anything different. We continued to search, continued down, hit another bedroom, we go in the bathroom, and what do we do? How many people searched that bathroom that day? Two. A, what is it, a 1,600 square foot ranch? Two people for a, what, a five by eight room? Literally, the way that he was coming out, I had, we literally had to turn sideways to get past each other so I can search the exact same area he just did, right? Wasting time, wasting energy, and I wasn't holding up my end of the bargain when I took the oath. That's why I'm here today. We got out of the, we got out of the house, primary complete on the radio, right? Were we correct? Hell yeah, we were. No one was already in, inside anyways, but we searched for a reason. But... If we would have done it correct, the way that I would do it now, or at least the way that I'm trying to do, be better and do it now, we would actually give someone a chance that they were inside. So what I say now is search like it's your life that depends on it. Now I can say, hey, what if it's your kids are depending on it? But you know what? That's not my reality. <laughs> my reality is actually the way that I started searching is because I literally thought, hey, if I don't find him, I'm going to die. So I got off the wall. I started using both hands and started orienting myself. <clears throat> think of an NFL player. You think of one QB that has won the national championship, or the national championship, whatever you guys want to call it. I'm not a big sports guy. Uh, uh, the NBA Finals, whatever you want, um, the Super Bowl, that doesn't know their arena of operations. They what? They practice every day. They practice every week. They practice as a team. They practice alone. They know that the only conditions that really change are the floor, that, they, that they play upon, which is either going to be grass or artificial turf, and what's above, right? Open or closed domes, dorms, domes right? It's about it. They know it's 120 yards long, 10-yard end zones, 53 and a half yards wide. Team benches are along the 30-yard line. They know the hash marks are 70 feet, 9 inches from the sidelines. Goal posts are 10 foot high. That's standard NFL play, right? I just Googled this stuff. But this is, this is correct for all fields, and they still practice every single day. What about you? What about me, right? What's our arena? Do you really know what our arena is? Depending on the de different parts of your country, if you talk to Jerry Smith, right, he gives all their probationary guys a Baltimore brownstone book. It has the layout and the configuration of how they fight fire, where they fight fire, right? They know where the bedrooms are, they know where the stairs are. If I had that, I'd give it to every single one of you. I'd buy it out of my pocket, but I don't. The, the reality is that I work where probably, I don't know, 90% of American firefighters work. I, I work in places that have single wides. We have McMansions that are six, 10,000 square feet. We have taxpayers, we have commercial structures, right? So we need to know what that means. We have multifamily dwellings. We have tri-levels. We have taxpayers, McMansions, center hallway, we have commercial structures, we have storage units, we have center hallway storage units. I'll tell you what, if you don't know layouts in those, those are not fun to fight fire and those are scary. They don't have the egress that residential structures have. Then you have, uh, 
you have Jim and Joan. They're 23 years old, right? They meet down at the bar. They fall in love. They order a cheese hamburger, right? They get married. They go on a honeymoon. And a few years later, they buy this house right here, right? They want to live close to the Portland, the urban area. This is what they can afford, a little, little thousand square foot. Then they, they go on vacation, and she's pregnant. What's that mean? Well, they don't want to move their area, right? They haven't actually had reality of a kid yet, like a lot of us have, that, ah, this isn't going to work. we got to move. But right now, what are they going to do? They're going to build up. So they change our arena. So they add on a second story. Then they want more room. Hey, we're going to be here a while. Let's, modern, a while. Let's modernize this. Let's talk, knock out walls. I want a great room, just like everybody else has. Then they add a bunch of crap to it, go shopping. Kids don't pick up after themselves. I'm tired. Right? This is, our, this is our reality. And this isn't even hoarding. This is normal conditions. Then we get called. That's what we arrive to. Right? It's on fire. It's all that plus on fire. Kid in the front driveway. Mom yelling at you. I have more kids inside. And you have electrical lines on the Alpha and Bravo sides. You can only make access two ways now. Right? This is reality. We have fires like this. Two years ago, I had a fire like this. It cut off sections. We had multiple victims inside that were reported. And we had power lines that took out two sides. We arrived, we arrived first with no water, right? We had 60 gallons of foaming fury. But that does, that's not for structural protection. You've got to make a decision. So I'm here to talk about true orientation. What does that really mean to me? And what I want it to hopefully mean to you. <clears throat> Sorry about this. Uh, you can barely read it, but we have a website we started. We make no money off it. It actually costs us money, but we only do it because we want to make it better for our civilians and for you, and we want to give a reason why you search, where you search, how you search, how long it takes to search, right? This is data we're collecting. We collect data from live or dead victims if they're found on a bed, under a bed, very specific. 77% of our grabs that we've collected are made in lower or zero visibility. So if you want to argue that you don't need to know what orientation really means, 77% of our victims are only going to be stumbled upon, possibly, right? But if you actually are oriented, that's where our success is made. Where do I start? <coughs> We're going to start with occupancy, right? So we get tapped out, sucks your fire, and it's a school. What do we start thinking about when it's a school? The occupancy, right? What's that mean? The rooms, the type. What kind of rooms do we have in schools? Classrooms, classrooms right? OK. We all know what classrooms look like, right? We start getting a mental picture. What else? Gyms, gyms right? How big is a gym? Size of a basketball court? OK. Start thinking about that, right? If I tell you you have one bathroom, you have a female bathroom, what do you have next to it? A male bathroom. Most likely in schools, how they're set up. So you start thinking about the room type, the size of the room, right? The gymnasiums, they're as big as a basketball court. If you're going to a, you're going to a 1,600 square foot ranch, how big is a bedroom? 10 by 10, 10 by 12, right? What about the location of the rooms? You understand that like residential structures, two story, bedrooms are above with a bathroom possibly, right? Where are the classrooms? Where's the gymnasium on this school here? Well, it's a one story, but it's where it's elevated, right? You can start sizing up and understanding where things are lit out and where it's laid out. And the furnishings, what does that mean? Well, how about when you go inside this, go inside this school door right here, you go in, your first door on the right, you feel what in a classroom? A desk, right? Desk, chairs, how many? I don't know, 20? But it's not two, and it's not 100 but at least you're expecting and you know what to expect. Because when you feel a desk, you're not questioning, okay, what is this tap, 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 tap. You're wasting time. And that's something that our victims do not have is time. So if we know and we expect what the, we expect the size of the room, we expect what type of room, what kind of furnishings, we know how we're searching it and where we're, what we're going to do with that. Hallways. How big is a hallway in a school? Typically, it depends on what state you live in, but an organ egress is about 10 foot wide. This matters. It tells you, okay, how many sweeps is it going to take? How, can I take it in two sweeps or does it make it three? Right? You, hallway egress, that's where our, our victims are at. What about exits? Now, this is getting down to the nitty gritty, but I will tell you in Oregon, if it's a sprinkled building, you can have exits about every two, uh, 250 feet. 
If it's non-sprinkled, every 200 feet commercial occupancy, right? Okay, well that matters. Because what about if you have a victim? Okay, which way am I gonna go? How far do I need to take them? Should I just take them in the classroom instead? What about if you call a mayday? You know, what if you're disoriented? What does that really mean? How far have you gone in the structure? If you've gone in one exit and then you find another door, oh, you're 200 feet in, right? We already know. So instead of arriving this on a fire, you want to start sizing it up and just seeing smoke. I get it. Read the smoke. I want you to read all that. But just visualizing, okay, well, we gotta, we're going to go in there. We're going to close our eyes and we just see a bunch of zero to low vis. I want you to start sizing up the occupancy, the layouts, the era, the size, and start getting a map. This is what you should be seeing. So we're going to look, start looking at residential layouts. Why residential layouts? Well, because 84% of our victims are going to be in residential layouts, right? That's where we fight a lot of fire in. That's where civilians die in. And this is, this is our bread and butter. In 2016, three line of duty deaths, one fire only. Only one fire, three line of duty deaths during search. Does that surprise any of you? We need, we need these facts to actually fight what people fear, right? When people come up to me and say, hey, we don't fight in vacant city, we don't, we're not going to go inside and search vacants. Okay. Hey, you're the boss. I'm a firefighter. I ride backwards. I, I, I'll take orders. But why? And when you can say why, well, we kill 53 firefighters inside vacants. Most of you could probably tell me that's BS. I could. So how many do we kill? inside, right? We need to know this. How many do we kill in search? Three in residential structures last year during search. Three. So we start looking at uh, layouts, single wide trailers. We're going to go through a few of them. These are ones that are pretty prominent in our area. The thing is, if you need help, I will help you in your area. We can break these down, but this is just a handful. Single wides, what does it matter? When we start thinking about layouts, what matters? Look at this structure. You have a fire in the kitchen, right? You have a, where, the, where are your main ac uh, access and egress doors? What sides of the structure? Bravo and Delta. Think about any single wide. Bravo and Delta, yeah. Are they like this? Or are they staggered, right? Is the one staggered in the back? Is it usually, typically, if you have a kitchen fire, if I'm gonna look at this, you have a kitchen fire, you have Bravo and Delta, I'm going to look at these windows here, and okay, that's a living area, right? Living area, probably kitchen, bedrooms in the back, laundry room, stuff like that. So if I'm fire attack, if someone else's fire attack, they go around and take and take the uh, front side door because that's they're they're going to take the first door, right? The we'll say it's a Bravo door, but it's towards the front. And they're going to hit the kitchen, right? They're going to hit the hit the family room. They come right in here. Your truck two, your sign search, right? You're the you're the inside team. Two for split two and two, two for VES, two to search. What door are you going to take? Are you going to take the door that they just took? Because they're going to go in this front door and get met by fire, and they're going to bottleneck right here, right? They're going to have a hose line or two. They're going to have two to three to four people on that line. And their job, once they put that fire out or start getting it cooled down, is to search the area, right? They search egress as their way in. They search that immediate fire area. Fire area. So what are you doing for the victims if we pick that same side if you don't know the layout of this? You're going, to go to that, you're going to go to the delta side, go to the back, and what do you expect? You're going to expect about four feet in, a bunch of shit. You're going to expect cat, cat litter boxes. You're going to expect, expect books and cleaning supplies. And I'm going to think about a bathroom and a laundry room and two bedrooms. That's probably what I'm going to think about. Does that make sense? What about a ranch? Here's one. Here's a fire, uh, here's a fire that happened in a, uh, a nearby fire department. This is first arriving uh, company, engine one. We have three sides of fire. Three sides of fire, heavy smoke and fire. We had um, uh, reports of multiple victims inside. How many people are gonna look at this and write it off? Start doing a survivability profile, right? Ooh, no one's alive in there. There's smoke. There's a lot of it. That's before, that's, that's before we made entry. Right? Before the fire service made entry. This is before. Right? But this is not the time we start looking at a layout of a ranch. If I start telling you about a, a ranch, right? So if we have a garage on the right, what's on the left-hand side of the structure? Bedrooms. Bedrooms, right? 
Okay, 1,600 square foot. How many bedrooms are you going to expect over there? Okay, if I say I want you to grab two sides, are you going to go on the garage side or the bedroom side? Why the bedroom side? Two reasons. One, you're going to be able to confirm how many bedrooms typically, right? You're going to have two sides of bedrooms, bathrooms, what the layout is. And two, is if you have a basement, do they typically put basements underneath a garage? No. I'm not saying they don't. I'm just saying if you're going to grab two sides. I'm grabbing two sides. I'm not doing a 360. We're going in for search. Somebody else, else got that. This is your typical layout. Your typical, right? Two-story standard. Start sizing it up, right? We already talked about it earlier. Two stories. Where are the bedrooms? Upstairs. Upstairs. All right. <laughs> Why does that matter? Target search, right? Where are victims? 44%, 43% of our victims are where? The bedrooms, right? Why? Some people say they're sleeping. I don't know. I, I don't know any of those victims. But I will tell you, if we have a floor one fire, where does the smoke go? It goes up, right? Where's their egress? It's the stairwell. Smoke goes directly up the stairwell. It cuts off all egress, and they are caught. Um, they're blindsided, we'll call it. They're blindsided. They, don't under, they didn't know the fire started. It starts building. Their, act, their exits are cut off. And they either have two options. They're either going to try to go out the window or go back down the, the way that they came. They know, right? They get, that's, where they, that's where our victims are at. So it's sizing it up. Where are the stairs? We'll talk about stairs a little bit later. What's the main floor layout? Right? You walk in that front door, what do you have? Okay. Start thinking about it. Different, look at the windows, look at the roof, look at the upstairs, understand that that's where your bedrooms are going to be, right? Family area. You might have a master on the main. Did you grab a couple sides? You might be able to know, right? But this is just a two-story standard. Three bedrooms, a bath up top, maybe two. What about bloom frame? You guys all have bloom frame in your areas? So now, uh, believe me, we all have, we all have knockout walls. We all put a bunch of stop furnishing inside of our house. I get it. Nothing is 100%. But if we start thinking about what the norm is, right? A normal balloon frame construction, what, 19, or 1880 to 1930-ish, what do you expect inside? I'm going to expect small rooms that are isolatable, right? They lived different. You got to know why. They lived different. They didn't live like us. They didn't have like these huge, inter you know, they weren't all rich. They didn't live like, you know, Nowadays, we have so much money that we just want to show it off. We want to put the stairs in the front. We have these huge grand areas. We have areas that we don't need. We have rooms we don't even go in. Each of these rooms have a purpose. They have a study, right? They have a kitchen. Well, they, want to, they don't want to hear someone else cooking, so they close the door. They're very pocketed, right? What about a split entry or a buy level? If you don't under, know the layout of this, you better start figuring it out on your next EMS call. I guarantee if you have these in the area, you'll go on an EMS call with this. Everybody knows. Three bedrooms, one bath on the right top. You're going to have go in the front door. If you, you're going to go about five feet in. One set of stairs going down, one set of stairs going up, right? Down's going to go to, it doesn't really matter, laundry room, bathroom, living area. But the one in the upstairs, you're going to have kitchen in the back. You're going to have a living space on the left hand side, and you're going to have bathrooms on, or bedrooms on the right, right? So bear with me. What if we have four, four windows that are, up, that are uh, there now instead of having that normal five, six foot living space um, window, right? So now it looks like all bedroom windows. Where's the living space now? How do we know? What about the, look at, look at the other clues. What about the chimney? If I have one chimney in a house, that's where my living space is. I'm not going to put my living space, or I'm not going to put my chimney in my master. If I only have one, I'm going to my living space, right? Where's that at? Just a little bit of size up, right? This is what you should see. One split entry, split level. They're mostly the same. People take out walls, but they don't really change bedrooms from left side to right side. What about a split level, a trial level? Same thing. How many feet in? How, where are the stairs? Does ever, anybody not know where the stairs are on this? Okay. I wouldn't call you out anyways. You go in. Five feet to the left, obviously, because that's where the buy levels are. To the left, one set of stairs going up, one set of stairs going down. This one, they're going to be oriented from Bravo to Delta. On a buy level, they're Alpha to Charlie, right? 
What's upstairs? What kind of what kind of rooms? Three bedrooms and a bath. Okay, simple. Well, let's pick. Let's choose one of these to be yes. There's two windows right there, right? They're neither one of them. I'm gonna tell you, one's a bathroom. Neither one of them is frosted, because this is the country. We're not afraid of the cows looking in, right? So how do you start sizing that up? How do you know it's a bathroom compared to the compared to a bedroom? You what, the vents above, correct. Look above real quick. It might be dark, okay, but you know what? At least you've tried. Look at stuff. I'll tell you, like, right, below, this, below this window here, right here, there's a, uh, a laundry vent, right? So you're going to pick between the windows below. You're not going to pick the laundry vent, right? It's probably a laundry room, bathroom. This is what you should expect. Not surprising. What are apartment style, apartments, garden style, center hallways? What does apartments have? Common hall or common walls, right? So what does that mean? Well, if you know code, once again, I'm fairly big on code just because it's taught me a lot of things about building construction and layouts, is that they have minimal wall space. So if that, if that is true, then bedrooms have to have egress windows, right? Per code, apartment structures, even residential, the new ones, have to have a certain size window, <laughs> 20 by 24 opening, on an outside wall. So it limits, when you have a fourplex like this, they, this fourplex, they only truly have one outside wall because the other two they're sharing and then one of them is just for access. So there's no windows on that side. So where's the bedroom? Okay, you know where it's at. So is it a one bedroom or two bedroom? You'll size up the windows. And then you see one that's a you know, normal bedroom window looking size and one's like a six foot tall or a slider and whatnot. You start, okay, how many bedrooms is this before we make entry? What about center hallway? You're the inside crew, center hallway search. You go to the second floor, smoke down to the floor. You open the door, you go down here, open the door, force the door, where are the bedrooms? In the back, right? This is simple, simple stuff. I don't make any of this stuff up, right? This is just something that I just want to pass on so that it's something that you don't have to think about when you get there. If you don't know this now, you'll never think about it then. I guarantee me, you just won't. And this is the simplest stuff. Go to the back. What about size? 1,600 square foot home versus a 5,000 square foot home. McMansions, master on the main, right? What does this mean to us? What is it, if you have a 5,000 square foot home, what are we additionally looking for besides square foot larger rooms? I'll show you. Additional like walk-in closets, pantries, master baths, bonus rooms, offices, separate dining rooms, right? It's typically what we start thinking about. <coughs> So I don't have a good idea of how a layout is because we, we cover a good area that we have McMansions. We have 5,000, 6,000, 10, 12,000 square foot homes. But I don't know how to figure out the layout by teaching a class. I look at the windows. I kind of look at the idea. But I want to know what's going to be an addition. But what I do know is I walk in that front door, it's going to be vaulted, right? The stairs, they're going to be prominent. What about the second floor, though? Right? If this is a two-story, this is a 5,300-square-foot home, what are we going to expect? We're still going to expect the master on the, on the top floor, right? The bedroom on the top floor. But what else in the master? We're going to walk in closets, master baths. And if you're not expecting that, you will get lost in it. You don't think that's true. Well, you haven't searched enough McMansions yet. I know people that have at literally got lost. That we, have as, we have walk-in closets that are as big as this room. Talk to guys that have actually had stairs inside their walk-in closet. And if that door gets shut and you don't, are you not cognizant of what you're actually in, you might not get out. They circled three, four times, right? So how do we get out? What do we know? We gotta be cognizant of what size is that room. Okay, most walk-in closets have access here and there, right? So what, what do I do? Some of the things I think about is like, okay, clothes hang. So if I just run along, close, 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 gap. Oh, there's my door. I don't touch a wall. I'm like, oh, okay. They're all hanging, right? There's my door. If there's not a door, move on. Close, 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 gap. We're gonna check the gaps, right? Just be cognizant of where we're at. Where's the view? A built-in home versus a built-out. What does that mean? Well, we have lots of hills in Oregon, right? So this structure here, this is a single family, or this is a single family dwelling, but a, uh, a ranch in the front with, this is like a four-story stagger thing in the back. But where's the master? Where's the family room? It's in the view side. Right? It's on the view side, it's on the back side, versus a built in, built into the, you know, built in on the other side of the, the road from here. Where's the master? Top floor, front side. Right? 
be cognizant of where you're going into. McMansions, they have a lot of money. They do whatever they want, but they still want a view, right? Here's the home we went to. Uh, this is this is home here. It's like a four-story staggered. We arrived first due. We had fire, uh, basement, floor one, getting in the attic. And uh, so we VES this, um, the Bravo side, right? So it's not my, it's my normal officer, but a uh, different firefighter I'm working with. He's, my officer's doing a 360. Team B, we're going to do VES on the Bravo side. About four or five in the morning. I got a 24-foot extension ladder on scene. That's it, okay? I want, to, I want to go to the top floor. I want to go where the master is, but I can't because I can't reach it. My 24-foot ladder is too short. This thing drops off pretty good. So what do I do? I, we start sizing it up. What room is it? What room did I ladder here? Okay, a bathroom, right? What kind of bathroom? I'm going to assume a master bath, right? This isn't the best picture. You can't see all, all sides. But if I break that window, what am I going to go into? Bathtub. How do you know that? Right? It's got a view, but it has that non-opening, non-operable window on the, on the second side, and it sticks out. It's just kind of a typical layout thing, right? So be, be cognizant of that. Well, I'm not telling you a success. I'm telling you a failure, actually, right here. So I was tired by the time we got this window out. We VS a couple of these windows. I take out the window. I knew where the, the master bedroom was, and I knew what I wanted to do. But I went in, and which way did I go? Did I go right or I went left? I went right because I failed. I failed. Right? Where's my door? Where's my door? If this is the master bath and that's the master bedroom, where's my door that I need to isolate? It's left. For some reason, I didn't size it up correctly. I went right. What did it cost? It cost me an extra room that I couldn't isolate to search. It was hot. It was smoky. It was dark. Right? Still waiting for lights in the fire. It cost potentially our civilians inside because I didn't take that last couple seconds to do what I preach and actually go, oh, I should have went left. You know how many doors I shut before I actually shut the main door? Oh, more. We had, we had one, we had two walk-in closets in there. We had your own toilet closet. You had a double doors. And then we had the master double doors. So, you know, three, four, five, a lot, right? It's just taking up time. This is what was inside that, inside that window. Something I expected. So that's a win. <coughs> but overall, that was a failure. But, you know, we talked about it. I learned from it. And that's why I'm here. Before we go in, we talk about grabbing two sides, right? All these little pictures up top, I'm circling what? You guys talked about it before, vents. What does that vent mean? You line it up with a window, it tells you what kind of room it is, right? Bathrooms, bedrooms, kitchens. You sit, I have, a, this is a ranch on the front side. You look at the, um, the chimney. It's a double chimney and it's staggered. It's staggered, what I've been told, is so that it doesn't create some kind of vacuum and so that they don't, one um, exhaust doesn't go into the other, right? But if, but if I start sizing these up in my area, if they're staggered, there's dual, I'm thinking, well, there's possibly a basement on the backside, right? Dryer vents, it's gonna tell you where the laundry rooms are, right? The roof, look for chimneys, that's where the living area is. Vent pipes are the bathrooms, the kitchen, the laundry possibly, right? Roof vents, where they're located on steep pitch. Not all steep pitch bedrooms have windows. People convert attics all the time. But if you might find the knee walls and how big that room is, that the vents are down 10 feet, right? Start cogn be, especially balloon frame, be cognizant of what's above. Windows, right? They tell you layouts, the room's isolatable before we VES, right? You want to know, are we going in a bedroom? Are we going in a bathroom? What are we going into? We'll VES any, bed, any window possible. But I want to know if it's still isolated, isolatable or not, right? Be cognizant of what we're going into. Where are the stairs? Grabbing two sides, right? It's going to let you know, is there a basement possibly, a floor above, a half floor above, your access, your egress. <clears throat> Some more stats. This is fairly important to us. 4% of our victims are reported that everyone is out. 4%. This is, now, this is an first. This is just what we've collected in our data, right? This is a live or dead victim. 4% of the victims are reported everyone is out. What do you do? What does your company do? What does your station do? Your 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 department do when someone comes up to your buggy and says, hey, everybody's out. What do you do? Do any of you get on the radio and say that? I'm going to say, for me personally, I hope I never, ever say that. Tell me one good reason to say that. One. 
and I may change my mind. But I can only think of negative things. I can think of a lot of calls that people have forgotten that their nephew, that their friends, their children's friends slept spent the night, that their grandma's still in there. They are frantic. They can't think. It's their emergency. It's our emergency as well. But you know what? We're prepared for this, right? We're fit for this job. They aren't. Don't believe them. Don't announce it over the radio. 26% of our victims are not reported at all, right? So how does that dictate your scene? If you have reports or no reports, right? You have to make that decision. It doesn't matter. My tempo is the same if we have reports or no reports. I want to search just as well. I want to get inside just as fast. I want to save every victim that I can and know if I do miss a victim that I did everything I could to prevent that. Search culture, Justin McWilliams, Brother in Battle.